Hey, so in this video, I'm going to show you how to build a car rotisserie. So there's this guy, Red Wing Steel Works. He has a plan on how to build an auto rotisserie. Um, you can find him online here. It's very nice of him to share this, this document. It has all the material cut lists, what you need so you're not trying to figure stuff out. And then it also has a list on nuts and bolts. Now there's 24 bolts here for the casters. Um, in my situation, I'm just gonna weld it on. So no, we don't need 24 bolts. And we only need four nuts here if you're not using nuts and bolts for these casters. Um, it's really well done document. Has everything right there. So yeah, check it out, it's a PDF file. You can look through it, see what you need, right? And in my situation, I am gonna use the hydraulic ram jack so then we can jack it up much easier. Um, it's only 80 bucks at Prince's Auto. So for two of those, 160 bucks plus tax. So, this list here shows the nuts and bolts that we need. We actually need 38 three quarter nuts and 38 three quarter bolts that are at one and a half inch long. So yeah, these are my material. There's a place in Calgary called Metal Supermarket. They're a bit pricey, but you know, they cut all the material for you, so you don't have to do that. Um, I label all my stuff here so I don't grab the wrong size. It's quite a bit of material, but I mean it's an investment, right? If you're gonna start restoring car, you wanna do the job properly. The material for me it came out to 1275 bucks. That does not include this center piece here. Um, you gotta cut it to length. It's recommended you have it keeps um, everything tight and sturdy. I'm gonna figure that out once I fab up the rotisserie, then put it up, mock it up to the car and see how long of a length I need. It's just two by two square tubing. So we're gonna go ahead and start drilling all the holes for our materials, get that all the way, and we can start fabricating. Um, recommend using a drill press and get a lot of these bits here. They do a really good job drilling. Holds for days. Next, we're gonna cut our gussets. The drawing calls for eight four by four by a quarter flat bars. You can just order four instead, cut them in half, and you got your eight gussets. All your gussets, you wanna deburr all this just so you don't cut yourself later on, you know? Just deal with it now. Nice and clean.
And then now we're gonna grab our two by two by 17 inches tubings and we're gonna put 45s on these. Okay, Next, I like to run the flapper disc over my cutting edge so it's smooth when we put it into the position. So for my welder, I'm using a Millermatic 180. Runs 240 volt, runs hotter than your 110 volt, obviously. You wanna make sure you have a good welder so your rotisserie doesn't fall apart, break, and then drop your project on you. Or even, you know, potentially damage your, your car in this garbage. So we're gonna build the end brake first and you're gonna need one two and a half by two and a half 72 inches long, one two and a half by two and a half by 50 inches long, then one two and a half by two and a half by 18 inches long. Two of these 17 inch brace gussets. And we're gonna need three plates of the four by four and a half by a quarter for the casters. And we're gonna use one of these four by four gusset, which is a triangle one. So we're gonna start with the 72 inch square tubing. And we're gonna find the center of that, which is 36 inches. I'm gonna mark the layout for two and a half square tubing.
Just try that through the front. Grab our 18 inch, butter it up. This is a little high, you want to knock it down so it doesn't interfere with this tubing. Grab your 50 inch square tubing. Set in place. I want this piece to be flush with this. So this piece needs to go back that way. Grab your 
17 inch square tubing. Just make sure it's nice and in the center of everything. Let's get that attack. Give all your pieces a good tack so these can use some more tacks on the bottom. So this material is 316 thick. So your welds, you want it at least 316 up to a quarter inch. Fill it well. 316 should be sufficient. So I'll probably start off with here. That way when I weld these, I can tie in nicely into that weld. Everything's gonna get welded all around, all, all the joints. And you can flip it over to the bottom. So we're gonna put a gusset here. Now the problem is there's a weld, so you're gonna to wanna to take your grinder and just knock down the edge here. Just like that. You can eyeball where the center is, or you can measure. So one thing I did forget to mention and do is your 18 inch square tubing, the hole needs to be on top. Mine was on the bottom so I just drilled another one. And you want to clean away any oil residue before you put your nut in. I put my nut and my bolt in so I can make sure my nut's dead center in this bolt. We'll put three tacks you can keep it flush and then you can weld half and half the nut, one on each side or all around if your weld is not that good.
Next, we're gonna put on our cast plate. There you have it, one end frame done. So do the same following steps for your second one. And we'll move on to the next piece after that. So for the next piece we're building, we're building a hanger bracket. So you're gonna need one 60 inch, two and a half by two and a half tubing, one 31 inch, two and a half by two and a half tubing, and two gussets. goes has a gusset on each side same thing you have to knock that down so it clears the weld weld that all around you want to make sure you have a lot of weld here that's got a quarter inch fillet weld because a lot of weight's going to be hanging off of these two sides here
So the next piece that we're going to put together is the pivot point. We're going to need this piece here, which is 3 by 3 by 16 square tubing. And this is going to be your 3 inch schedule 80 pipe. You're going to want to grind off any weld zone because this stuff, this coating here is not really nice to weld onto. So I'll go all around here and where your nuts go. And we're going to need six nuts for each of these um, pivot points. So the holes here is going to be the side. I'm going to put the pipe. Drawing cost for a quarter inch of this edge. Make sure your pipe's centered. Make sure your pipe is square. Nice roof cast, put plenty of material on here. 40 inch billet well, at least. So, with this make, it's about three casts. And then we're going to go ahead and install our nuts. Make sure our bolt doesn't bind anywhere. So we're going to build a pivot arm and this calls for a two and a half inch schedule 80 black pipe. So this pipe, when you get it, it has a black coating on it. It's not actually going to fit into this hole perfectly. So I took a flapper disc and I knocked it down all around evenly, make sure it's nice and straight. And I just keep checking every now and then until the pipe goes in here, check there's no binding or anything. That way uh, we won't have any problems later. So we're gonna need one square tubing, three by three. This one's 12 inch long. And then this is gonna be your schedule 80, two and a half inch pipe. So we're just gonna tack this up, make sure it's nice and square. going to be in the drawing stage three pass but I say at least yeah cordage built well all around and 
then we're gonna get our three quarter inch bolts, same thing. Tack them in and then weld them off. So the next piece we're gonna build is the mounting arms. So mounting arms, you're gonna need to build a total of two right mounting arms and two left mounting arms. Um, drawing calls for 24 inch two by two and then 10 inch of three by three. So I'm just gonna fit it up on the drawing calls from this end to this line is seven inches three quarter. Uh, put that here. They want it flush here. So I'll tack all these up first so I make sure I have two right, two lefts, and then roll them up. Like this. And then we're gonna tack on our three quarter nuts. is the body mount bracket. So we're gonna need a two and a half by two and a half by five inch long. And this tubing here is two inch by two inch by four inch long. So you wanna put the hole on this side and this piece here with the hole drilled through. It's gonna sit just right in the center. It's gonna be flush on the bottom, center like that, very simple. Stack them all up. Give a good quarter inch well all around. And the next thing we're gonna do is weld a three quarter inch nut into each of these. Next piece we're gonna fab up is the body mount. So we're gonna grab our five by three plate with the hole on this side and our inch and a half by inch and a half square tubing, 12 inch long. We're gonna put our holes on the side, center in the middle, quarter inch from the edge here. 
Make sure it's square and tack her up. So next we're going to do is install the mounts for our hydraulic ram jack. This is a 6 ton jack, it's overkill, you don't need that much. That's what they had at Princess Auto. You're going to need two of these 3 by 2 by a quarter plates. And then one of these inch and a half by inch and a half square tubing with the body hole. I'm going to be using a half inch bolt that goes through this hole and this hole. And then I also bevel this piece here. We're going to put the bevel on the outside. And when we fit these up, we're going to have one bevel piece on this side and the other bevel piece on this side. It's going to have a total uh, diameter width of two and a half inches. It's going to be flush with this. So we'll tack it on. Then we'll tack on our square tube in here. And uh, we'll fit in the bottle jack. Make sure it all lined up. It doesn't touch anything. We'll be good to go. Then we can roll it out. And also, so I did a measurement from this piece here to where the bolt hole lines up. That's five inches and three quarter. And then I measured from here out to where that square tube with the holes going to line up. It's going to be five and a half. So we'll fit that up. Now we're going to fill up our hydraulic ramp jack. 
You want to put your handlebar on the side that's convenient for you. In my case, I'm going to put my handlebar this side. So it fits up pretty well. I would suggest leaving these bolts in while you weld these. Because doing all this weld here is going to want to pull the plate out. Same with this side, right? We'll weld this out, put plenty of passes there. And then you can go ahead and weld this all around. Just watch out, you don't get any splatter on your threading. So I'll throw another nut there just to protect it. So we can go ahead and test out our jack here, make sure these bolts are loose before you jack it. Slow, but it does the job. If you wanna spend a little bit more money, you can get the one that uses air, it'll be a lot quicker. You can bring them both up at the same time. And then you're going to want to throw one pass in here on both these uh, mounts. And if it does suck in a little bit, just hammer it out. Make sure you keep the same space you had before. This is 2 inch and 16, so just double check, make sure it doesn't suck in. Still two inch and a 16, so we're good. There you have it. And one last thing that you're gonna have to measure is the tube that runs from this end and it goes over and attach the rotisserie in that end. Um, I just put two by fours here just to help support it so it doesn't bend or anything. You don't really need it, I just feel like I, I can put it there. And then we got a piece that joins those two tubes together because one long tube is not going to fit in my car to bring it here. So this tube here and this tube here, they are measured at 97 and a half inches. They're two by two by an eighth wall thickness. So two pieces of those. And then this center piece here, it's two and a half by two and a half by three sixteen of an inch thickness. And it's only six inch long. And all you gotta do is get two more three quarter, quarter inch nuts and bolts and then drill and bolt them in. So that will just hold it together. And you just join it like that, right? One bolt here, one bolt over there. It's just to help uh, with the whole support and everything. So that's how you build a car rotisserie. Big thanks to Red Wing Steel for sharing his blueprint. No, that was very helpful. 
for those who has the ability to fabricate one instead of paying one for four or five grand. Um, if you have any questions or comments, you know, write down below or send me a message and um, see what I can do. Thanks.